They say that time heals all wounds, and that couldn't be more true than Yu-Gi-Oh! banned cards, because when a deck is topping, when a card is all over the tournament landscape, everyone is very quick to ask Konami, to beg Konami in some cases to hit that card on the next forbidden and limited list. However, a year or maybe two years after that card has been on the ban list, suddenly everyone wants that card back into the game. The fact of the matter is, in almost every single case, every banned card at one point was heavily complained about until Konami banned it. So it's kind of funny to think that just a year later, people are asking for those cards to be implemented back into the metagame, usually due to power crept reasons. If people think a card was too good in one format, maybe a year or two afterwards, there's now enough counters to that card isn't actually good. You might even remember a discussion video I did a year and a half ago about 10 cards that were on the forbidden and limited list that I felt could be less restricted in the future. And what's funny is that I went back and looked at that video and of those 10 cards, seven of them actually are less restricted than when I made that video, which means that yeah, Konami eventually agreed with me and what many players thought could come off the ban list. Now whether or not that's a card going from limited to unlimited, which is in the case of many of the ones that I talked about, or in some cases a banned card went to limited and actually in a couple of those like El Shadal Construct, I actually think the card has some chance to go to semi-limited or unlimited within the next year. In today's this video we're doing a slightly different analysis than that last video that I've been talking about because we're only going to focus on cards that are currently forbidden in the TCG that I feel could be less restricted. Now in some cases that means the cards could go to one or maybe two or sometimes three but it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the cards are currently forbidden and I feel realistically if they came off the ban list they probably wouldn't make any impact or at least not nearly as much as an impact as Konami seems to think that they will because that's why Konami is keeping them banned. Of all the banned cards, Time Seal is one of the slowest, and I'm really surprised that it's still banned. Now, don't get me wrong, skipping a draw phase is a huge deal, especially in slower formats. However, really take into account just how slow this card is. For example, if you draw this card on turn one, going first, this card is basically a do nothing card until the fourth turn of the duel. Now, I know that you can use this card on the second turn after you've set it, but it won't really affect anything until your opponent second turn when they're actually skipping that draw phase. So you go first, you set time seal, your opponent goes, you flip time seal, doesn't do anything that turn, doesn't do anything on your next turn, it only does something on your opponent's second turn, which is the fourth turn of the duel. Oh my god, is that a slow effect? It is kind of unsurprising that Konami doesn't want to unban this card, just because there are so few effects that actually force your opponent to skip their draw phase. I think they're just a little bit too worried about cards like that, and spoiler alert, there's actually another card on this list that also skips your opponent's draw phase but in general I feel that time seal is just a really really underpowered card I'm not sure which decks would play this obviously the combo decks wouldn't because they don't really care about that kind of thing they just want to draw combo cards to make a big board I don't even think you'd play this in like alter or true dracos though I don't think trap decks would play this card because trap decks need all of their traps to be super impactful in the early stages of the game and that's not what this card does so I don't really know which deck would take advantage of time seal and therefore I think it could easily come off off the ban list. I think I've brought this card up in every single balance discussion for the last two years, so I might sound like a broken record here, but why is Tribe Infecting Virus still banned? It blows my mind that Konami is so afraid to bring this card back. Yes, I'm aware that this card does trigger graveyard effects, it does trigger things like Burning Abyss, it does even trigger things like Dangers, but does that really matter? I mean, for a long time people said, oh, you can't bring this card back because it triggers Atlanteans, but who really cares? Who's playing Mermel Atlanteans? And really, even if you played this in Mermel Atlanteans, it's an unsearchable one of that's only good going second. And we also have to consider the fact that people these days aren't even playing cards like Dark Hole or Regeki, which sometimes, most of the times, is better than Tribe Infecting Virus. Yes, maybe it's kind of interesting to do Tribe Infecting Virus and trigger those danger effects, but realistically, I don't even think that's good enough. I think you'd rather just summon the dangers, get those free draws, and also trigger their effects and set up a huge board in the process. Tribe Infecting Virus is just one of those cards that I think Konami is afraid to bring back because it's one of those cards that has a non once per turn discard effect. But I think what would actually happen if Konami brought this card off of the ban list is that people would mess around with it for a couple weeks like they do whenever a card gets unbanned and then people would just discover it's not quite good enough to put in their main or side deck and then they just cut it completely in favor of better, more impactful cards like Evenly Match or Raw Sphere Mode, even Dark Hole and Regeki, which like I said, currently aren't seeing that much play. A few ban lists ago, Morphing Jar came back 
back and basically had zero competitive impact. You had some players like myself trying it out in things like Danger Dark Worlds, but realistically the card is just too slow for modern Yu-Gi-Oh. In that same way, I think it's very realistic that Morphing Jar number two could come back and also make not that big of an impact. What's interesting though is that I actually believe that Morphing Jar number two might have some rogue applications as sort of a defensive card against your opponent's field of extra deck monsters. And I know that might sound ridiculous, but hear me out. Think of the main board that Danger Thunder Dragon ends on. They have Amorphage Goliath, they have Dark Matter Dragon, Skull Dread, and Colossus. Hilariously, Morphing Jar number two actually perfectly counters that entire board. Your opponent's entire field will go into their main deck and extra deck, and then because only one card got shuffled into the main deck, Amorphage Goliath, they'll only excavate until they can summon one at level four or lower monster. That is a pretty funny counter to a very common opening board, and it sort of falls in the same line as the new Megaton cards that Konami sort of hinted at in the latest description, and this is just another card that can break those extra deck heavy boards. Is it going to be good against every deck out there? Probably not. I mean, realistically not, but I think the idea of it sometimes countering these gigantic boards that the combo deck makes, even though it's a little bit slow to do so, is actually pretty hilarious and I think an excellent reason to bring this card back. And if you disagree with me and think the card wouldn't be good at all, well, good news. That's an even better reason to unban the card. Yes, there is some worry with the Jackpot 7 deck, but I don't think that deck's nearly competitive enough to be worth talking about, which means that in general, both Morphing Jar number one and Morphing Jar number two can probably come off the ban list without anyone worrying about them or really anyone noticing. Perform Pell Skill Crobat Joker has had more ban list restriction changes than almost any card out there. It's been banned, it's been limited, it's been unlimited for times, and still it is a card that I think could probably come back to one copy per deck, maybe even two copies per deck without a noticeable difference on the metagame. Don't get me wrong, the card is very, very powerful. It does search three different archetypes and it's also a really good pendulum scale, but I think that pendulums are in an excellent space right now as a solid rogue strategy without being too overpowering. I think if you bring back too many good pendulum cards like Monkey Board or Plush Fire, maybe then it gets a little bit crazy, but if we just brought back Joker to one or two copies per deck, would it make a huge difference? Probably not, but I think Pendulum players would really want this card back at one or two copies, just as a slight boost to consistency. I think that's perfectly fine, and when this card isn't doing crazy things with Monkey Board, it's not that overpowered. Obviously, when it got banned, it was because it was being used in tandem with Iris Magician, and if Iris Magician stays banned and Monkey Board stays banned, I think this card is perfectly fine to come off the forbidden list. Yadagarasu has almost none of the downsides that I mentioned with Time Seal, and yet I think it still can come off the ban list without making any impact on the competitive scene. It's much faster than Time Seal, it's a little bit harder to set up because you actually have to inflict damage. It's also a searchable card, technically speaking, if you think of the spirit monsters like Aratama and also the Shino Birds, but overall I think this card could come off the ban list and probably no one would play it. Once again, it's not a card that's good going first, uh, sort of like Tribe Infecting Virus, which definitely puts it at a disadvantage in 2019, but even going second, it's a card that's not helping you break your opponent's board. It's a card that's actually only good if you already can deal with all of your opponent's cards, but if your opponent can already get rid of all the cards on your field without using their normal summon, well, they probably were going to win that game anyway, so I don't know if the Yada actually makes a huge difference. Of course, if the card was brought back, it might actually make Spirits and Shino Birds a semi-rogue strategy. That's obviously the best deck that can take advantage of Yada, but realistically, I don't even know if that would be good enough to push that deck into a rogue competitive status. I think Yada, very much like Time Seal, is just a little bit too specific and a little bit too slow, even if it's not nearly as slow as Time Seal, to actually see competitive use in 2019. These days, people care much more about creating huge boards, whether or not that's with monsters or with a whole bunch of back row, than they do just locking your opponent out of one draw. However, it's worth mentioning that I think the biggest reason Konami has not brought this card back isn't because it's super powerful in 2019, but rather because it was one of the original four banned monsters alongside Cyber Jar, Fiber Jar, and Injection Fairy Lily, crazily enough. Those were the first monsters that were forbidden, and it's kind of leading Konami to say, maybe we should leave this on the ban list for historical context. Now, of course, Injection Fairy Lily is completely off the ban list, but Cyber Jar and Fiber Jar as alongside Yadagarasu have all stayed banned for the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh's Forbidden and Limited list. Anyway though, hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion video about five currently banned cards that I feel could be unbanned and not make a 
huge difference in the metagame, or at least not a huge negative difference in the metagame. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about these five cards, as well as some other suggestions for cards that could come off the balance that you feel wouldn't ruin the format. I'll see you guys later though. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.